Hello and welcome to our special call-in show on coronavirus where you answer all your questions, any queries, any doubts you may have regarding the disease and today we're also going to talk about the testing. Remember there's been a bit of a controversy over the rapid testing kit so we're going to focus a bit on that. Uh, joining us to answer all your questions we have Dr. Shanmuga Sundar Gopal, endocrinologist joining us from Chennai and Dr. Muhammad Shalub, interventional cardiologist from Calicut in Kerala. Thank you so much uh, doctors for joining us uh, this morning and sparing your time to take all the questions and in fact we already have some questions lined up we have a caller from Jammu Ajay calling in go ahead with your question Ajay yeah my hello can I call can I talk yes yes please go ahead my question is that because of this test we are undergoing because of lockdown yeah I have come across a patient whose tachycardia is uh, not uh, controlled tachycardia uh, preferably in the morning hours of the night the tachycardia is not controlled, it goes up, and because of that, he has sleepless nights and he is a bit disturbed. Why is, why is it so? Is it because of diet? Is it because of stress? Or is it because of lack of medication? A lack of health care. All right, Ajay, thank you for your question. I think this is a very, very common concern during this time. Uh, Dr. Shaloop, to you first. Uh, he's talking about how he's not able to sleep and he's having all these concerns and uh, cardiac issues. Uh, hi, Ajay. Uh, See, the thing is that, you know, tachycardia is something uh, which can be normal also. It can be a sinus tachycardia. It can be because of anxiety and the things going around us. So if we have to worry only if the tachycardia is abnormal, you know. If uh, in, as, as uh, I know you're worried about the COVID thing. So the thing is that, you know, in COVID, only if you have symptoms of COVID or if some patients can have without uh, symptoms of COVID, arrhythmias in around 10% of the cases and it's usually atrial fibrillation so if you are worried you know you can just uh, uh, consult some doctor nearby take an ECG and see if it's a normal sinus tachycardia. if it's a normal setting we can give some medication to control the heart rate so there's nothing much to worry all right dr gopal also this this complaint about not being able to sleep this is something we're seeing a lot and a lot of people a lot of elderly people are already under a lot of medication to manage various other conditions and uh, you know now there ha there a lot of them are depending on sleeping pills as well see uh, again it's a very important question and uh, dr salup has addressed it uh, related to the covid 19 but again this stress what you are undergoing because it's an extraordinary situation no one has faced it so everyone is under the stress, uh, particularly the diabetic people or hypertensive people who are on a lot of medications. They are not able to see the doctors. So definitely there may be some changes. So important thing is we are going through a tough phase. Probably next one or two months we are going to face it. After that we are going to come out of it. So it needs reassurance from the, their own doctors and the family members. And government is doing its bit to educate all the people. So they have to take healthy food and they have to maintain their physical activity, which is very, very important because now due to the changes, they may not be going out to the regular jogging and all, but at least they do should do some floor exercise or say they should go for walking in the terrace. So they should maintain their physical activity and they should take healthy foods, which gives some zinc or magnesium so that they stay calm. So it's very, very important issue. Post lockdown, we are going to see much more cases due to the stress, but again, reassurance is very, very important thing. All right. In fact, we have a related question. Ravi from Chennai. Go ahead with your question, Ravi. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. My question is uh, about, you know, the doing pranayama or the breathing exercise. And um, I was looking at MDTV a couple of weeks ago. They, there was a suggestion that not to do inhaling because it can be you know, prone to infection. Wanted to know whether uh, pranayama can be done. And very quickly, if I can ask a second part, uh, can we take uh, uncooked uh, food like salads or vegetables? There's another theory that once it goes into the stomach, the acids will kill the virus. Thank you. All right, Dr. Gopal. See, uh, again, uh, pranayama, definitely it can be practiced unless if you are in the environment where there is already COVID-19 positive and there is a chance of uh, high risk of aerosol transmission, which is very, very rare. It's particularly documented in the hospital setting. Unless it's there, I think it's better to practice a breathing exercise so that it can improve your immunity. And if you get infection also, it, try, it helps you to fight against a virus. So I don't think so there is any contraindication to do the pranayama. We advise for to do it. Even the government is giving advice to do it. So always you can go for it. And second part, uh, coming to the vegetables and fruits, again, there is a lot of confusion regarding this. 
so we can't wash the fruits and vegetables with the soap and water so it's always better wash your hand with the soap and water before uh, cooking the vegetables or eating the fruits and wash the vegetables and fruits with, with routinely we do with uh, running water and then use for cooking and uh, raw vegetables uh, it's very difficult to say what the who is advising is use partially cooking the co- cooked vegetables so that you can retain the nutrition that in that way it can be safe to take all right we have another caller from uh, the andamans uh, prem uh, kumar uh, go ahead with your question hi uh, i'm calling from um, andaman and nicobar islands i actually have a question yes yes go uh, ahead i have a question sir uh, that i am actually in institutional quarantine yes i actually have a very narrow corridor and uh, we share, we use the same carrier corridor for take uh, so what i want to know is that uh, whether the i don't know whether they are positive or negative the neighbors so when they are taking the food and they sharing the same corridor can it stay in the air in the corridor because there is no ventilation in the corridor all right uh, all right prem kumar i hope you know you you come out uh, fine from this isolation so uh, the dr shalub he is very concerned about the fact that he shares co- this cor- narrow corridor with his neighbors in this uh, center quarantine center and when they have to take food and uh, of course the the fears about uh, whether the virus is airborne what would you recommend he do see the general recommendation is that it can stay uh, when you cough 1 uh, to 3 a uh, feet it can travel yeah. so uh, we'll have to if you are uh, in a closed environment like what he says mr ravi says and uh, if you you you, you can you, you have to uh, keep your personal hygiene you know you have to keep, cover your face ma- with your mask you have to wash your hands and i'm sure the housekeeping people who are there they are constantly uh, uh, cleaning the doors or handles and uh, the uh, uh, wall so that you know that there is no transmission so this is what we can do uh, of course there is concern and it is uh, it will be good to be careful yes sir, and ensure other. that your neighbors also are wearing the face mask when, when they come out but yeah. uh, wishing uh, mr prem kumar uh, all the best there we have ijaz calling from srinagar go ahead with your question yeah good morning to all uh, uh, yeah we have been hearing about this plasma therapy so uh, do we have data to believe that uh, to support that it's effective it's uh, it's a breakthrough or we can just rely on this all right well uh, i i believe it's very preliminary right now but yes dr gopal why don't you take that question uh coming to treatment for uh, covid-19 uh, we don't have any proven therapy so far and uh, this plasma therapy has been used in quite a good number of patients in us and uh, europe still we don't have the outcome data it is not a published data but they are claiming that there is some improvement in the outcome even in india we have one patient recently from delhi where there is improvement in the clinical picture but we still don't know whether it is due to the plasma therapy or its natural uh, recovery of from the virus so we need to wait and see still we have uh, scientific data because in uh, medicine everything is evidence based so we need to have strong evidences other than this some drugs are on trial hopefully within uh, one or two months we will know whether there is some good outcome with those medications if there is a good outcome then hopefully we will have some medication for covid-19 all right and human testing of the vaccine is also starting uh, in 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 some part so hopefully uh, you know some good news coming on that front i wanted to ask you in, in fact doctors about the testing because we've had this big setback uh, with these rapid test kits in rajasthan you know uh, they've sent them back they found issues with them and the method that we usually use is rt pcr though rapid testing was going to be this big game changer in the sense because uh, the, you know we talk about how we're not testing enough so uh, first to you dr shalu what, what would you say uh, about the two if you could explain to us regarding these testing methods see now we have uh, two testing methods one is the rt pcr you know where we will uh, it usually positive in the when the patient is in the active phase in the first two, one to seven days and uh, now the rapid test is about the, the antibody test you know which is more or the antigen protein with more the antibody with the blood serum what we are doing now the thing is that you know we, the confusion is with the whether it is faulty the one which have been imported but we have to study in our population that's why icmr has rightly told that you know we'll wait for two days we'll check it properly so it, it usually gets positive after seven days you know it's an antibody the the, uh, the earlier question about this plasmotherapy i like just adds yes, uh, why it 
why it is little promising see there's a, there was a small study in uh, china which involved five patients the patients you know with covid 2019 what happens is you know when the infection is severe because of the viral load the can affect your lung resulting in ar disease requiring ventilation and also it can affect your circulation requiring supports to increase the beat. so in five patients between january end and march 25 they gave this for patient who are in on ventilation for more than 10 days with uh, uh, recurring supports and high viral load who are not effective with antiviral medication as of march 25 they could uh, uh, discharge three patients and two patients become stable so that's why it is very uh, promising and uh, this uh, plasma therapy now the government is going to try to do a big trial in our country so right. this antibody test yes in fact we have a question on testing and yes the plasma therapy as as both doctors said it's it's in the preliminary stage it's promising but we're still waiting for more proof on that front we have a caller surya prakash uh, calling in from hyderabad go ahead with your question yeah good morning doctor this is surya prakash from hyderabad doctor our uh, testing has been quite low as it is and now we are facing with the problem of uh, defective testing kits and due to uh, which uh, we don't know the results and uh, when do you think in india we will reach the peak and uh, and when this band will be over like can we reach the peak it will be over or when do you think the peak will be over all right that that's uh, quite a a deep question regarding the peak but yes uh, this similar question to mine regarding the testing dr gopal uh, first you a lot of you know uh, uh, worry over this front the fact that rapid testing kits are turning out to be defective and uh, we're not testing enough see again the goal as the dr saluk told the gold standard testing is rt pcr so the conformity test is rt pcr so most of the countries they are making diagnosis based on rt pcr So antibody testing is basically whether to see whether the patient has uh, person has developed antibodies to the virus or not. So it is helpful in the community setting, in the mainly in the hotspot to see whether there is a community spread or not. So definitely, whether it's a setback and ICMR has also given in uh, notice regarding that yesterday. So they are advised to do the PRT PCR test at present, which is a gold standard, and they will come back with the report on the rapid antibody testing. Anyway, we have to accept it and we have to move forward and we have to. Uh, see what the government is doing for that the next step so coming to the peak yes, the hopefully peak. we think this is the peak and let's pray that it doesn't progress us but saying that in other countries we are seeing that it's gradually progressing but relatively in india it's relatively slow compared to the western countries like us or europe and uh, possibly due to multiple factors like bcg vaccination or our innate immunity and uh, the temperature pattern etc so probably the uh, uh, so, researchers or epidemiologists are uh, suspecting that uh, we will reach peak in may middle or may end and if uh, lockdown persists or if at least some strict regulations are persisting for more till may end or june maybe we may become uh, covid 19 free by august or september but again all these are predictions we don't know about the nature of the virus because this virus is behaving differently in different countries so we need to wait and see All right. In fact, the WHO has said it's going to be with us for a long, long time. But uh, yes, how uh, you know how it affects Indians is is a, is a thing that needs to be looked at. And Dr. Shalub, if you could just add to that uh, about uh, the fact that we're not testing enough, then we don't really know how, what the numbers are. If we admit that we're not testing enough, then we don't really know what the numbers really are out there. So whether we're peaking, you know, what stage we're at. A lot of uh, patients are asymptomatic, and uh, also at the same time, all this uh, talk. Uh, you know, a lot of doctors are flummoxed by the fact that. that uh, it's not spreading as rapidly as we would have thought or we're not seeing as many people in hospitals or dying of the disease uh, god forbid and uh, whether you know there's some sort of uh, immunity indians have there's there's loose talk about it the doctors also talking about it but saying it's all very preliminary right now the bcg vaccine being talked about uh, so various issues when it comes to india yes true you see we, we have to understand we are a developing country and we have to understand that you know our we our population is huge compared to all these western countries and things like that so the thing is that we have to judiciously use whatever kits we have and whatever in, and we, the one good thing what has happened is 
government has put this lockdown in and the people have supported it's a great thing you know we can redu reduce the speed at which it spreads and we can use our resources in a better way that's what uh, the best point is so now they are coming to the antibody test our gentleman asked actually the government is uh, going to do much more tests it will be mo much useful in a state like where from uh, where i am see because we have contained the disease to certain extent now we want to know the how much is it in the community so this antibody test usually becomes positive after one week but there are some problems so you know reports have come from china that the, there is reinfection now there is reports coming from uh, south korea you know 111 positive patients have become uh, again positive the korean cdc told that it is because of reactivation of disease you never know then there is a talk that you know this uh, the virus uh, can mutate which uh, or, or, and a new infection come that also is not very clear we don't know uh, as of now so the thing is that uh, and the method of testing in south korea for instance they test within 24 hours and a patient in isolation and they get discharged so maybe you have not got the uh, virus uh, i mean the antibody uh, in that time or right. it could be any so these have implication for uh, vaccine also. See, for example, this vaccine, uh, if, if, the, uh, if, if the immunity goes away after some time, then you will need multiple vaccine, uh, vaccine shots. Or if the, it is mutating, the vaccine which we have developed may not be effective. So yes, we have to do more tests. Like for example, now Goa has no cases, but they would like to know whether there is anything in the community, whether they have people have got how much percentage of patients without uh, symptoms had this so if you do more tests there you know they can control it better in goa and all Kerala. right so so a lot of more uh, studies is needed and this fear of it mutating is also something very real uh, we have a we have callers waiting uh, we have a vv patnaya calling in from hyderabad go ahead with your question All right, uh, we can go now to uh, Hassan, uh, who is uh, uh, calling in uh, from Kasargod. Uh, go ahead with your question, Hassan. Yeah, uh, good morning. Good Hello. Morning. Yes, yes, go ahead. Hello. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Hello. Yes, go ahead with your question. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my question is regarding the mask. The, as how can I say, the, the, use the N95 mask? But nowadays, they have changed that... Uh, make your own mask and wear it that how uh, because my my doubt is on that we, we don't know uh, the, the uh, all the cases in india that's interesting so we don't know uh, the who having the virus and also if you work in the um, no ordinary mask uh, how it work on that all right uh, dr gopal if you could take that question and this issue of masks is something that has changed from the start of this coronavirus when doctors would tell us you know everybody doesn't need to wear masks to now when we're asking everyone to wear even cloth masks. And this is to do with the fact that uh, people could be asymptomatic and still be spreading the disease. Yeah, exactly. Because as uh, we are discussing, uh, we are still not very clear about this virus, how this virus behaves. And uh, even now data are from US that many people are developing clotting in the blood, blood vessels. So it's uh, new uh, data is coming out. So each day we are uh, seeing new, new data. So again, uh, re recommendations are also changing uh, day to day. So regarding the mask, now the recommendation is uh, the healthcare workers or the people who are taking care of COVID-19 patients or uh, near to the COVID-19 patients, uh, they are advised to wear the uh, N95 mask. Otherwise, the normal persons who are not near to the COVID-19 patient or not in the hot spot or not uh, uh, healthcare workers, the ordinary uh, surgical mask or even the cloth mask will do because uh, we know that uh, we have limited resource worldwide not only in india worldwide there is a limited resource so we have to preserve this uh, n95 masks for the healthcare workers or the people who are taking care of covid 19 patients that's why the who and indian government has come with recommendation that n95 should be used only for those particular set of people and cloth mask will do for the other normal people as you rightly said, it is mainly the, to prevent the infection from even from the asymptomatic people. All right. We have another caller, Bhaskar, calling from Vizag. Go ahead with your question. Uh, good morning. Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, does cellular nutrition helps us to build a better immunity system at this hour? 
All right, uh, Dr. Shaloub, if you could uh, first take that question. And there's a lot of talk of building immunity. I know a lot of people are popping vitamin C and doing all sorts of you know treatment to help build immunity during this time, which we usually do to ward off uh, viruses and coughs and colds. Uh, see, the thing is that you know the uh, the severity of the uh, of the disease you know is uh, related to the age. You know, if you are older age, you can have your so patients have cardiovascular uh, uh, comorbidities. You have more severe uh, infection and you know even if your immunity is low so you, you you can have a severe disease so see there is no clear trials which prove that you know taking all these things will improve your uh, uh, chances in covid facing covid 19 but generally having a better immunity will be good so in people who who are fragile or who are not having proper minerals taking these may not be a bad idea but there is no uh, particular trial which shows that taking this will go and help things. all right we have time for just one last uh, caller pankaj calling from uh, mumbai go ahead with your question yeah good morning is it safe to have sex during these times and when will the media stop using the word social distancing and phys uh, and use physical distancing because social, well, social distancing, distancing is India a word that was given to us by WHO, but yes, now there's talk of calling it physical distancing. But uh, Dr. Gopal, first to you, should you maintain physical distance in the bedroom? Uh, I don't think so. If Unless your partner is uh, positive, there is no point in uh, physical distancing. So only the social distancing, that too particularly because we don't know who is uh, infected. Now Nowadays, uh, we are told that each and every person we should uh, think as they are COVID-19 positive. That's why social distancing is advised. Uh, so otherwise, if uh, at your home, if uh, there is uh, no uh, COVID-19 positive cases, there is no need for any distancing because uh, with your uh, wives or kids, there is no need for any physical distancing. Obviously, outside the house, because we are not sure who is positive or who are negative, so it's better to maintain the social distancing. All right. Anything you'd like to add to that, Dr. Shalu? Uh, no, what Dr. Gopal has already told everything. Actually, you know, baby booming is expected, you know, uh, <laughs> with this lockdown. <laughs> all right. Well, on that note, it's time for me to end this show. Thank you, doctors, for joining us uh, and uh, taking all those variety of questions that we got during the show. And thank you all for watching at home. Time for a break. We'll return with more.